Hi everyone, this is Bob Brown. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is about the uh, death of the high-ranking European Union official's daughter, Maria Landenberger, who was the the suspect is an Afghan. Uh, I don't know the right word. I don't really want to use the word migrant. Um, I'm not sure what the right word for these for what's happening in Europe right now. This is a shocking crime. She was a medical student. She was volunteered at the refugee centers. She obviously was a very good person and she died a pretty brutal death and this pretty much shocked, uh, I hope it shocks the German nation. Now this is not a video about all the bad migrants. This is really about a video about leadership from a business point of view. If you've watched my videos, I, I always try, I'm a business person and I always try to look at through the lens of business. And it seems that this problem with the migrants can be solved a very different way. For years, there have been organizations that have helped build other countries. And it seems that that is the way to go about this. Um, um, I'm an old school guy. I'm old school. And first rule in life is you have to take care of your own home, house, and family. That's, that's rule one. And... If you're a Westerner, you know what I'm talking about. I'm from the West. I'm an American. I'm an old school guy. I'm, a, I'm an old guy. And you take care of your own house first. And after you get your own house in order, then you can use and help other people. And I'm going to use a term that may not be what people want to hear. But you should never really inconvenience yourself to help others. And I know how that comes across. But it, at the end of the day... If you are harming yourself economic, uh, economically to help others, you really, in the end, you will not be able to help anybody. So, the where the European Union is going wrong is is number one, the everybody involved in the trading of migrants, and I think there's a business, and there are people are paying top dollar to get on these refugee boats, and they're being sent into Europe. There needs to be an international commission, international patrol of the Mediterranean to prevent this. Anyone involved in the chain of, of this, where this, this massive human trafficking, this massive human wave that they're sending into Europe, needs to be arrested and put in prison. Have all their goods and services seized, any banks that are involved in this, the management needs to be immediately arrested and, and, and put in jail. If you do that, you will cut down a lot on this because... The, these migrants aren't just parachuting in. They're getting on boats, they're being brought in, they're being disembarked, and there's a lot of money changing hands. Now, I don't blame these people. They live in terrible conditions. They're being offered, you know, social networks, social welfare. And the, the tragedy is there are refugees who really do need to get into Europe, and they're, they're being lost in this human wave. So from a business standpoint, it must be attacked that the, the Mediterranean has to be patrolled, I mean, it just has to be patrolled. I don't know if it's the U.S. Navy or the British Navy or the French Navy or it's a combination of those three nations because the French, the British, and the Americans, we can project power into the Mediterranean fairly easily. That will, will simply say anyone caught trying to bring migrants in, your ship will be seized, the, the captain and crew will be immediately arrested, you'll be, sent, you'll, be sent, uh, you'll be sentenced very quickly and you'll be put into prison. The boat will be seized. The point of origin will be discovered. The people will be sent back. And any money that gained, it would, it would be equally divided amongst the people who got on the boat. The money would be given back to them. Here's your refund, and away you go back to where you came from. Now, that shouldn't be the end of it. That shouldn't be the end of it. Those countries will have to be built. So the United Nations, remember that thing, the United Nations? The United Nations, where are you? you know, they should be involved in this. But an uncontrolled human wave is going to is already destabilizing Europe. And this case of this of, of the medical student who was viciously killed just highlights the problem when when as as many uh, commentators have said when you're bringing in people you have not vetted. 
It, it only makes sense. You, you know, in a business, I'm not going to just let anyone off the street into my business. I'm not. I'm, you're going to go through a vetting process. You're going to have to show me that you're a resident. You have to show me your work. I have to see your resume. I have to make sure you don't have a police record. If you have a police record, we'll have to talk about it. You know, have you reformed? That, that's common sense business. I mean, if you have a business, you're going to, you want to hire the best people for your business that you can afford. It's simple. It's, it's not hard. I want to see your resume. I want to see your LinkedIn profile. These people come here, they, have, they really have no job skills. And who's going to pay for all this education? It's easier, it's a, from a business standpoint, by training them in their own home country, by paying for them in their own country. It's much cheaper. Bringing a person here and saying, well, we're going to put you up in Berlin. I mean, I, I can't, I, most of us on this, watching this channel or any channel, we can't afford to travel to Germany and stay in a Berlin hotel. We can't. And now the Germans are being asked to send all this. I really fear for Germany. I, I have a great, great fear for Germany. And I, 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 I don't know what the German people are going to do. I mean, they have this migrant crisis. You know, Angela Merkel, I, I don't even know what, what is going through her mind. I mean, is it the end of the German state? And then, meanwhile, the Chinese are coming in to buy a lot of the German businesses because the Chinese have a lot of cash, and they're coming in to buy German businesses. All these great, many of them are family-owned businesses. They've been in the German families for generations. Germany, as I see it, if, if there's not an immediate change, Germany will cease to exist, as we understand it, within 10 years. <clears throat> it's being preyed upon by a lot of forces. And I think the German people need to understand what's happening. On the one side, you have the Chinese who are coming in to buy up all these great German pharmaceuticals and engineering firms and everything that makes Germany the powerhouse it is. That, once they buy that, they're going to transfer all that back to China. Believe me, I have seen this firsthand what happens. I've been in the business, I've been in organizations where you get into a, a joint venture with China. And, you know, I, I'm not anti-Chinese. If you're dumb enough to give everything to them, then that's, that's on you. That's you as a bad business person. And the Chinese will absorb and move all that technology back to China. And it will render China, Germany economically desolate. Meanwhile, Angela Merkel is on a quest of... I, I don't even know what Angela Merkel's doing. I have no idea. I mean, I mean, she seems to want to do the right thing, but what is the right thing? The right thing is you have to take care of Germany first, because Germany, if it's left alone, it has enough resources to go out and help the rest of the world, not bring the problems here. Like I said, I'm an old school guy. I'm old school. You don't bring, if there's a neighbor having trouble and there's domestic violence and everything else, I don't move that into my house. I mean, I go to the Red Cross, I go to the, the women's shelter, and I do, donate there. And I let the experts and specialists take care of it. I don't just bring it into my house and say, well, now i got to deal with it. That's what Germany did. They moved, it, they moved all these problems in. And, there, and, and, and the thing is, these migrant groups in and of themselves do not really get along. Afghans don't really like Syrians, and Syrians really don't like you know, Tunisians, and Tunisians really don't like... Uh, you know, people from Africa, and there's a massive cultural divide between the Arab peoples and the African peoples. And just so you know, my best friend is from Benin, Africa. He's like a brother to me. And even he doesn't understand what's going on. He's like, he doesn't know what the Europeans are doing. You know, it, it really isn't about skin color, just so you, you're clued in here. It's it really about cult clash of cultures. And and the class of cultures is very complicated. So look at this from a business standpoint. Germany is, is a German, German, Germany Inc. Germany Inc. is a business. Germany Inc. is a business. And they're now saying, we won't vet any of our employees. Any, any employee who shows up will put you to work. Well, they actually can't. They don't speak German. They don't have the technical skills and knowledge to work in Germany. Germany is, Germany is a highly advanced, it's more advanced than the United States. You know, it's, it's, a very, it's, like, the, it's like Netherlands and Germany. They're, they're, they're technologically highly advanced societies. They're, they're more advanced than the United States is. You know, I've been there, and I mean, 
their their technology, the way the way they build roads, and the way they have houses, and the way that their whole way of life is more advanced than than mine as an American. I don't think it's going to be that way for much longer. So you have you have Angela Merkel with some kind of neoliberalist philosophy that I I, I mean. I don't even know where she's got this neoliberalist philosophy. That's what it's called. I don't even know what, what the philosophy is. It seems to be destroy Germany philosophy. Then you have the Chinese businesses moving in with very large checkbooks. And hey, they're going to do it. They're going to come in and buy these great products and great companies because they're for sale. And there seems to be no one in Germany that realizes that Germany is being bought at bargain basis prices and eventually all that technology it's not going to stay in Germany folks I'm guaranteeing you the Chinese are going to move it back you know and that's kind of shame on the German government and the German businesses and ultimately the German people for allowing it to happen but once that technology goes out it doesn't come back that easy ask us in the United States I'm in the what the I really dislike the term but I'm in the rust belt I'm in the rust belt and once that technology moves, it doesn't come back easy. You know, and they'll move it out on you. Trust me. <laughs> I'm telling you German people, they'll move it out so fast you your head'll spin. I mean, I'm I've lived in Ohio and Indiana, and I've seen and, and people here, we have seen massive job loss, massive job loss. We have seen everything. And if you want to know why Donald Trump won, because we saw what was coming at us. And we said and we in the Rust Belt Really, we, we should be in the industrial heartland. That's our new name, industrial heartland. We saw what was going to be put on us, and we said, no way. You know, so Germany, I, I feel for this medical student and her family, it's a horrible crime. You don't have the resources. You simply don't have the resources to deal with all these people. No one does. They, they have to deal with their problems themselves, just like we did for centuries. It, it doesn't, it's not going to happen overnight. So Germany's facing massive problems. I, I really fear for the people of Germany. I really fear for you. I, I'm praying for you. I'm, I'm making videos to help you. You can't let the Chinese take all your businesses. You cannot. And again, I'm not on an anti-China rant. If the Chinese are going to, if the Chinese communists are smart enough to use capitalists against them, hey, that's that's them. But you got to be smart enough to say no, thank you. We want to keep our businesses here, keep our jobs here, protect our way of life. We have to do it. And then in turn, we can help other people. <coughs> the migrant problem has to stop. And every, anybody who's, getting, who's making profit off this and ultimately profiting off the misery of the German people and the future misery of the German people, they need to be arrested and put into prison. And anybody who's banking and making money on this, they, that, that techno, they, those banks and institutions and, and organizations are, that are profiteering off this, they need to be seized, they need to have their assets completely liquidated, and the people need to be put in jail. And not only that, even though they may have limited liability companies, this law should be put in that even though you're a limited liability company, but if you are knowingly contributing to this mass human trafficking problem that's hitting Europe, I think that's the right term, this is kind of, of, kind of human trafficking and profiteering off Europe, everything is liquidated and that'll put the fear of God in them and that'll start stopping them. The third way, the third problem is I don't know what, you know, Germany, Germany really needs to reassert itself as a, na as a nation. It needs to, the, the European Union as we understand it is a failed experiment. It really has failed. It didn't have to fail. That's a different video. It did not have to fail. Europe did not have to fail. But it, I think this migrant crisis, and to be fair to Europe, to be fair to the Europeans, the Americans did this. The American government, the neocons, got into power after 9-11. They went in, destabilized Iraq, and we can have video after video, but the U.S. government's hands are not cleaning this at all. So as an American, I feel that we... As Americans, we have a responsibility to help Europe to get out of this mess that we have caused from the collapse of Libya to indecisiveness by President Obama in Syria to the ill-fated catastrophe that was the Iraq war to even the invasion of Afghanistan. I mean, you know, I always tell people, if Alexander the Great couldn't defeat the Afghans, what do you think, why do you think we're going to be able to do it? So this is going to, have to be a joint effort between Europe Britain, France, 
Canada, the United States, all the Western powers, we've got to stabilize Europe. Europe cannot be allowed to continue down this path. And, and for God's sake, people of Germany, do not, do not let the Chinese take your businesses. Do not sell them out. If they go, you will end up like we did in the Rust Belt in the United States. Now, the good news is we, we are starting to turn back to life, but it could take decades, and we're not facing anywhere near the challenges you are. Germany is the size of Wisconsin. In, in the Midwest, we have a lot of room to move around. We have giant farmlands. We, we, we have a population that's young and growing, and we, we can keep expanding. We have a new turn in the government that hopefully is going to direct us that we look at this country first. And once we get ourselves and get our house in order, then we can help other people. That's it's just common sense. And Germany's in no position now to help anyone. With, with the Greek debt crisis and everything that's gone on, Germany is weakened. And I, I really, really fear for Germany. I really fear for Germany. I fear for the people of Germany. I fear for the migrants that are being that are being hoodwinked into getting on these boats and brought across the Mediterranean. And I feel that everyone who's profiteering off these people's misery and the misery they're inflicting in Europe has got to be imprisoned immediately. If that ship, if they catch that ship in the Mediterranean with human trafficking, that captain and crew and ship are immediately impounded, they're thrown in the jail, and that ship is sold to help defray the cost of these people. These people have to be returned, and then they have to be, you know, they have to be given help. And, then, and, and when these are returned, the UN, hello, UN, have you, are, you still, are you still open for business? Is there an operator answering the phone there? I, I don't think there is. But when you return them, that's when there needs to be a UN camp. So when people go back in, they can be, they can be reassimilated into society. And that's where business people like me and others, we have to start help investing those countries. You know, that's what this is. We, we have lost the idea of the free market. We have lost this idea. The free market is the only way we're going to survive. The free market is the best way. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. But it is better than every other system. It's like, you know, it's like democracy. You know, I think it was Winston Churchill said that democracy is the worst form of government until you look at all the other alternative, alternatives. Same thing with the free market. It's, you know, it's, it's you know, people think it's the worst form of human wealth creation until you look at all at all the alternatives those countries like afghanistan and syria they, they were beautiful you know syria lebanon these were beautiful countries in the 60s they were very cosmopolitan if you met lebanese from that time period they spoke french and it was a very cosmopolitan place it's been ruined so from a business standpoint people of germany don't let china take all your businesses Put pressure on the government to, to immediately cease all illegal migrations and human trafficking. Because what's, what the hoodwink is, you're like, well, we're, just, we're, not, we're turning our back on those people. No. What's happening is this is actually illegal activity. This is human trafficking. It's a, form, it's a new form of human trafficking. But don't think that the old, old, all the old vices of humanity aren't being inflicted on these poor people as they're being moved into Europe. And then they're using the social welfare system of Europe to weaken Europe even more. I mean, is this part of a vast plan? I, I don't know. You know, conspiracy theorists say it is, but if it is or isn't, it doesn't matter. It's, it's working that way. Europe is weakening. Germany is on the, on the brink of falling apart. And, it, and, 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 and believe me, they, the, Germany is being surrounded by sharks and they smell the blood in the water. Again, I, I, I want people to understand I'm not anti these people trying to save themselves. I'm really, I'm really not. But they're being preyed upon, and, they're, being, and they're, they're human traffickers who make money. And there's probably a component in there that are actually using this as a weaponized mass of people to destabilize Europe. It has to stop. It's very easy to stop. The French Navy, the British Navy, the American Navy, believe me, we can project enough force in the Mediterranean. There won't be, there won't be you know... There, there won't be a, a, a rubber raft able to cross the Mediterranean if we don't want it to. And once that stops, then we can start working our way back into these countries to help these people rebuild their societies. Because right now, their societies are destroyed. Syria is gone. Lebanon's a mess. Afghanistan's a mess. Iraq is a complete mess. Libya is destroyed. I mean, it's a mess. And 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 we in America, we share a lot of guilt on this. And we have got to accept that. 
But it's the same thing. We're trying to rebuild this country. We're trying to rebuild the Midwest. We're trying to rebuild the Rust Belt so that we have the capability to help people. And that's why a lot of us voted the way we voted, because we said we can't, we can't allow this to happen anymore. Well, this has been Bob Brown, and please pray for the people of Germany.